Generally speaking, I'm a big fan of REITs. I invest about 50% of my net worth in them, and I'm especially bullish today because REIT valuations are some of the lowest in years, balance sheets are also the strongest they've ever been, and cash flows are growing at a steady pace. But that does not mean that every REIT is worth buying. On the contrary, a lot of REITs are poorly managed, and I will go as far as to label them as scams because they have management teams that are consistently taking advantage of their shareholders to enrich themselves. But how can you recognize these REITs to avoid investing in them? Hey everyone, this is C. I run an investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I'm going to give you a simple tip that will help you to avoid investing in REITs that are poorly managed and taking advantage of their shareholders. But before I get into it, if you could please like this video, it will help me a lot. Thank you very much. So firstly, what is a REIT scam? A REIT scam for me is when a management team pretends to do what's best for the shareholder, but in reality they're just looking to line up their own pocket at the expense of them. It's not necessarily illegal and so it's maybe a bit much to call it a scam, but, but as I'm going to show you, there are a lot of examples where REIT shareholders have really lost a lot of money due to bad management. And so the most important tip that I can give you here to avoid investing in these REIT scams is to look at the management structure. REITs can be managed internally or externally. With an internal structure, the REIT is going to hire the management as employees of the REIT. They're going to earn salaries and these salaries will typically be based on some type of performance metrics that are tied to shareholder value creation. This is today the preferred management structure and it's what most REITs are using because it does a good job at mitigating the conflicts of interest between managers and shareholders. But then the second management structure that's still quite common today is the external management structure. With the external management structure, the REIT is going to outsource the management to an external company, an asset management firm, and this company is going to earn fees in exchange of the management of the REIT. This is often going to create a lot of conflicts of interest because of how these fees are structured. The main fee that the manager is typically going to earn is called an asset management fee. And it's a function of the total assets and the management. It might be, as an example, 1% of the total assets and the management payable each year to the manager. And so the issue here is that the manager is going to be incentivized to grow the portfolio as large as possible, even if it comes at the cost of diluting the shareholders. And so unfortunately, what we often see happen is that these externally managed REITs will consistently issue more and more shares to the market to raise equity. And they will do so even if their equity is discounted and, and the raise is a dilutive to shareholders. And then they will use this capital to buy more properties. On top of that, they will typically also really max out the leverage they will take as much debt as possible again to try to maximize the size of their portfolio and, and put shareholders at great risk. Here I have two good examples for you. The first one is called Industrial Properties Logistics Trust ticker symbol ELPT. This is a REIT that specializes in industrial properties. It has a great portfolio. A lot of its assets are based in Hawaii, a market with very limited supply and a growing demand. And so based on its properties and its fundamentals, you would have expected the company to generate very attractive returns over the past years as rents grew and the value of these assets rose very significantly. However, because this REIT is conflicted, it has been consistently issuing more shares at diluted prices, it has also taken way too much debt, and this has caused shareholders to suffer greatly. In 2021, it made the mistake of pushing for a very large acquisition. It acquired another REIT called Monmouth Real Estate and it paid an excessive price just to close the deal and grow the size of the portfolio. To close the deal, it had to take on a lot of debt with short maturities. It was hoping to refinance this later, but this is now a lot more complicated with the recent surge in interest rate. And so if you now look at a chart of the company, you'll see that share price is down roughly 90% of its highs. The market is really concerned that the company might have to file for bankruptcy or that at the very least it will have to issue some equity at a highly dilutive price. And so this is a prime example of what happens when you have a greedy manager that's just trying to grow the size of the portfolio and is more interested in its own fees than the returns of the shareholders. And then a second example that I can give you is a REIT called Global Net Lease, ticker symbol JNL. This is a net lease REIT that's supposed to be earning very consistent cash flow from its assets. So it has long leases with investment 
investment grade ready tenants but despite that again if you look at a price chart of the company you'll see that its share price has been steadily declining and you can also see that there's an inverse correlation with the amount of shares that it keeps issuing i'll put a chart on the screen to show you this and and so in short again the management keeps deluding shareholders by issuing more shares it leads to declining ffo per share growth it, and so it has led to dividend cuts in the past and i expect more of them in the future and you should really avoid these type of rates at all cost so how can you know if a rate is externally managed or internally managed well unfortunately there isn't a really simple way here because simple screeners typically won't give you this information and so the best way to figure this out is to simply go on the website of the rate typically if you go in the management section or the about us or a leadership section they will explain if they're internally or externally managed alternatively you can also find this typically in the investor presentation of the rate finally there is an even better option potentially it's to sign up for a two-week free trial to my rate newsletter hired landlord i'll put a link in the description for it there we have an intelligence sheet that lists every rate in the us with a column that indicates if the rate is internally or externally managed now if you want to learn more about how you can avoid painful losses when investing in REITs watch my recent video on how I lost 90% of my money investing in a REIT called CBL I'll put a link in the screen and otherwise again if you could like and subscribe that will help me a lot see you at my next video bye bye